Welcome to Naive Investor. My name is Gustavo Sayani. Today is June 21st, 2017, and this is our episode number 150. Today we're coming back to Companhia de Participações Aliança da Bahia. So Bahia Alliance Holding Company. Uh, our last episode was devoted to a first glance at... Uh, it's hard to say this, this name, but Aliança da Bahia. Uh, and um, we were able to see a holding company with no debt, uh, liabilities that seem uh, pretty under control relative to the company's equity. And uh, last year they made money and they got a positive free cash flow, which is no mean feat for a company in last year's environment in Brazil. Very tough environment, but they did uh, okay. So today we're, we're coming back to, to uh, Aliança da Bahia and we'll try to populate uh, 10 years worth of uh, earnings and free cash flow numbers uh, for this company. Let me just format this. Let's see how I do that. Okay, easier than I thought. I'm just doing preparatory work here. Okay, so we have it <clears throat> there. So let's see if we can get 10 years worth. It doesn't look like it's available here, but we have alternatives. So I'm going to take this DFP again. Let me see if I can find it uh, in our preview. Okay, so we go to consolidated as always because this gives the overall numbers. So I would, oops, sorry, my bad there. <clears throat> I would guess 19. Yeah. So here we have three years worth of uh, numbers. So we have uh, three years here. We already have 67 million down. So the earnings for 2015 were uh, 26 million and then 14 million. So okay, and we'd like to get free cash flow numbers as well. All right, so for 2015, we, uh, as always, free cash flow, the way we do it, uh, we take operating cash flow and add investing cash flow, which typically will be negative. So 34 minus five, so 29. And then eight plus uh, 13, so 21. So here they had a positive investment cash flow. Okay. Uh, so I'm just thinking about so we have 2016. Okay, so now 2013. So results, page 21, pretty much. Okay, let me just save this because it's rotated. So inside the browser, uh, it's just not as good. All right, so 21, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, so 2013, so they had a loss of 11, then a profit of three, and then a loss of two. So minus 11, three minus two.
What about cash flow? So 2013, operating cash flow 34, investment cash flow minus 18. 34 minus 18, 16. Then uh, 2012, minus 34. Huh. And then a pretty astonishing positive 131 minus 35 96 and then uh, 17 minus 8 9 okay it's inevitable that we start drawing conclusions with these six, six years worth. Uh, you know, the fact that they had a loss here and, and uh, this uh, quite astonishing free cash flow uh, result here, kind of out of line with the rest and stuff. But I don't know. It, we're better off uh, postponing any conclusion like that okay so we found about uh, six years worth of information here and we would like to get uh, four more how do we do that I always go to Morningstar they're pretty good at having uh, filings for uh, multi-year results there let's see okay so we found the company which is start so there's this link called filings here and let's see I always check if this is an order it usually is but not always Okay, so we have the annual report for 2011, so let's get that one. Let me download this dude. Okay, so consolidated results. I'm to just close the other ones. I don't know why, but this previous kind of slow. All right, so uh, page 21, apparently. Okay, so for 2011, a loss of two. Let me just make sure here. I may be making a mistake. Every time I see, oh, okay, we already have the numbers for 2011, so yeah. We can use uh, 2010, so 27 and then 3. If you're kind of paying attention and this is not uh, your nth video uh, with me, you'll see that I'm rounding to the nearest and you may have felt how things like typically even out and over 10 years these approximations since we're not looking for close calls, they kind of uh, even out anyway. So free cash flow uh, for 2010, so operating cash flow 67, 67 minus 56, that's 11. And then for 2009, minus 221 minus four so minus two two five and then this incredibly huge uh negative cash flow so what strikes me here and i can't avoid thinking about that is the complete disparity between uh earnings and free cash flow this kind of makes sense because this is a holding company so a lot of it is uh of its uh, results come from investments so uh, 
we look at this, but with not as much emphasis as we would for uh, an industry, be, because we need to emphasize, emphasize the investment returns, since this is an investment vehicle, pretty much. All right, so I think we will be able to finish our 10 years. So we will get, let's get the annual report for 2009. And might get the 2009 rather than the 2008. Because sometimes they correct their numbers uh, in subsequent years. And so we get a theoretically uh, large, bigger odd. We get theoretically bigger odds of good results. So this year, uh, let's see here, resultado consolidados, consolidated results, no results found, okay, let's just scroll down. So consolidated assets, consolidated liabilities, consolidated Cash flow? Hmm. Okay. Ah, okay. Results. So we get a, we have a, let's see here. Let me just compare. Okay. You can see here how for 2009, they had, they posted a, a profit of six. And here we have a profit of just three. So I'm pretty sure they corrected afterwards. So that's why we did okay in using those other numbers there. So for 2008, a profit of 402 and then 27. <clears throat> so a wide range of results here. And yeah, this is, is not such a large company. So typically uh, a bigger variance can be expected. Consolidated cash flow, so for 20, I think I made a bit of a mistake there or not? Did I or did I not? Nope. Okay, so free cash flow here is minus 151. Wow, plus 617. So 617 minus 151, 466. Okay, we don't have the numbers for 2007, so we'll need to look for it. Yep, we don't have it here either. Let's try this one. have the song Brick House in my mind, sorry. Uh, do we have free cash flow here? Looks like we don't, uh, so it's not the end of the world. We have nine years worth, so we'll work with that. I'm just, I just wrote average there in Portuguese. So here, okay, so we have these numbers uh, and, of course, they are not inflation-adjusted, and inflation has been a real factor in, in Brazil, for sure, over the last 10 years. So, uh, we're going to adjust for inflation, and how do we do that here? This is uh, the way I did it, okay? So, I multiply this number, and I have a little table right here. 
that I refer to, so inflation adjustments, B1. And now I can copy and paste and this will magically uh, understand that uh, I'm referring to respective columns there. So great, thank you very much. Uh, software developers, so inflation adjusted, my bad there, sorry. made a little mistake here so okay I had forgotten that one so now we're going to average these numbers out and see on average how much has this company earned over the last 10 years so before adjusting for inflation 56 I would guess after adjusting for inflation about between 80 and 90, just a guess here. 85, wow, good guess, huh? Uh, so here, average. So we'll use nine years. I don't think it's a huge deal. And uh, Okay, so on average, uh, Alianza da Bahia earned 85 million per year and had a free cash flow of 72, which is not that uh, discrepant. So if you compare 85 on a net equity of 510, this is quite a good number, about 17% on equity. And a free cash flow of uh, 16.5 on equity. So all in all, you know, pretty good numbers for, for this company. And of course, no matter how good a company may be, it's never worth an infinite price. This phrase is certainly not coined by me. Uh, I heard it, I think Charlie Munger said that and, you know, who knows... Uh, who he took that from. These things are pretty much eternal uh, in a sense, of course. So now, if this company cannot be worth an infinite amount of money, how much would it would be a good price? So it's always a range, right? But it centers around 10 times earnings, okay? Uh, since this company has no debt, we don't need to discount the debt. Uh, I typically discount the debt. I counted, I count debt as the price. So I add the debt to the price of the company. And then you have enterprise value, which is pretty much that. Uh, I don't yet, at the very least, I don't yet use enterprise value uh, directly, but the idea is very similar. So, okay, so how much is... Uh, uh, this company worth. Let me just go back to Morningstar. So on the quote tab here, uh, I think, so I did notice that PEAB3 is barely traded and PEAB4 is also very thinly traded, but it's traded uh, way more often than PEAB3. So let's get the price from here. So the market cap's 504 million, okay? So we put the market cap here. And now we look at PE10. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail here, but we're looking for companies with PE10 around 10 uh, or less. And it's pretty clear here that this company has a PE10 of around five after adjusting for inflation. So price, the market cap is the price of the company, right? 
divided by its earnings. So it's 7 before adjusting for inflation. Oops, I made a mistake there. Divided by the earnings. So it's a PE10 of 4.78. So price to free cash flow 10. So it's the price divided by the free cash flow 10 comes down to 8. Price divided by free cash flow 10, 5.64. These numbers look really good, okay? Uh, on average, I know we have uh, wild variations of performance, both in terms of earnings and in terms of price to free cash flow. But this company has no debt to speak of uh, and has all these, these uh, years operating. Uh, and the price looks really great because if you can buy a company Uh, for an average of five years worth of your the, the amount you pay, it's almost as if you were uh, getting 20% back each year, right? So if you get your money back in five years, it's a return of 20%. And even though the interest rate in Brazil, which by the way, is what we're using as a benchmark, right? Uh, if you were to invest in uh, government uh, bonds or uh, on the base interest rate there, which is hard enough to, to find, you would be beating uh, the government bonds by, by a large amount, right? So what I'm trying to say here is uh, we have every reason in the world to keep learning about this company, Okay. I saw some things there uh, just by glancing on the website. I'll come back about to talk about that uh, in our next episode. So yes, definitely a company that we should uh, further our understanding of. And we will do that in our next episode. So for watching this, uh, this one, thank you so much. Uh, if, you, if this is your first episode, please remember we have 149 more with... Uh, many different types of companies, both uh, traded in Brazil and the US. And I should like to say that if you have suggestions, corrections, uh, criticism, whatever you wanna uh, write about, please leave a comment and I'll be happy to respond as quickly as I can. Have a great day, bye-bye.